everyone. Today we're going to be talking about substance abuse and addiction. Um, here with Julian Toy, who is a graduate of the Human Services Counseling Program at George Brown College, trained in addiction and mental health, and also a substance abuse professional and my addiction experts. Um, so you are an alcoholic addict in recovery since 2000, and you now provide fit for duty and alcohol training for ICI constructors, HR, and EHS professionals. So welcome, Julian. Sure. Oh, thank you, Angela. You have a really interesting story. Can you tell me a bit about yourself and when and how your substance abuse and addiction began? Sure. Uh, so for me, I started drinking at about age 12. So the first time I got drunk was about 12 years old. I think we got uh, a guy to steal or go into the beer store for us. And, and I drank a couple of beers and I Basically, I, my mom caught me when I came home. I was trying to put the key in the door. I dropped it once, dropped it twice. Third time, mom opened the door, go to your room. Shortly after that, in senior public school, I got suspended for two weeks for coming to school drunk. We had gone to a guy's house on uh, Halloween, and we ended up drinking a lot of his father's liquor. And I, I had a couple of accidents on the bike on the way back to the school and I shredded my jeans and I tried to go into the class and blame it on alcoholic candies. That didn't fly too well with the principal. So that was, that was the beginning of my addiction. When I got to high school, I ran into uh, some people who were using drugs when I ran into high school. So I started using hash and acid at 14 grade as soon as I got into grade nine I think I started dealing in high school probably three weeks after that so for my high school career my main focus of course was drug dealing and finding out where the parties were after I after I was kicked out of school because I went for four years and I only got eight credits I ended up working at a at a lumber yard where I switched I started to switch to prescription narcotics so I smoked uh hashish and pot every day and then I switched to prescription drugs it pretty much continued like that for until I was 28 although there are some highlights I I did a lot of cocaine as well so I got into the cocaine at some point I did go bankrupt the bank repossessed my car I was working at uh, I was working at a large refrigerated warehouse at that time I was driving forklifts and equipment uh, impaired every day for uh, 16 years. When I, when I got, when I lost my other job, I ended up getting into a welding course through the Ministry of Education. So I took a 27 week welding course in Guelph. And I, I was using on that course with my, with my, my fellow students. And I met a gentleman named Inderjit. So I ended up uh, flying to India after that course because I heard they produce most of the world's opium. I ended up getting arrested in the Himalayas with 50 grams of opium in my knapsack. And I said my favorite prayer, which was get me out of this one and I'll never do it again. Um, I ended up being released without them finding the drugs. But I, of course, I, I, by that point, I was powerless. So I was right back at the drugs. The reason that I got out of it was because my brother uh, worked for Air Canada. And I was actually, after I got back from India, I was asking him for a plane ticket to Amsterdam to go straighten my life out. So that was prompted my family to do an, uh, an intervention at that point. You mentioned uh, you were a welder. Can you tell me some of the uh, other work that you've done in the past and how that's had a, a, an addiction, a impact on your addiction? Sure. So. The first job that I got at a high school, I was working for a large lumber yard in the Brampton area. It's still around. And when I went to the interview, I noticed that there was a gentleman working on one of the machines that I used to sell drugs to in the mall. So it, it was funny because I had a nickname for this particular guy and I remarked on it after I did my interview. I, I went to the mill manager. I did my interview. I came back down. And I noticed this, this guy that was a regular customer. So I found out I was hired for the job and I started working uh, in an industrial lumber yard, working on resaw cut to length, uh, stacking lumber, uh, doing lots of work with power equipment. And I found out a week later after I got hired, how I got the job. And the reason I got the job is because the guy that was working on the floor, the guy that I used to deal to years ago, 
he told the mill manager that I was a drug dealer and the mill manager hired me because of that, because he said that he wanted a new supply of drugs for the mill. So I was actually hired for that first job because I was a drug dealer, as horrific as that sounds. Now, what was uh, the turning point for you? How did you, how did you turn things around? The turning point for me, I, the last seven years of my addiction, I wasn't having a lot of fun. I was taking 100 Tylenol ones a day just to not experience withdrawal because prescription narcotics was my main uh, drug of choice, like Percocet, Tylenol 3s, Tylenol 4s, Secondols, 2 and alls, all that stuff. And I started to feel some chest pain. So I, I went to the doctor, they did an exam and they found out that I had a blockage in one of my coronary arteries. They did a stress test and a stress thallium test that showed that my, one of my arteries had a problem. It was shortly after that, my family did the intervention because of that plane ticket to Amsterdam I was looking for. So at that point, because of my heart condition, I realized that if I, if I kept going and I kept rolling like I was taking drugs and drinking, I was eventually going to die and it probably wouldn't be too long before I did. On July 13, 2000, I went to Brampton Detox, then to a treatment center in Toronto for 21 days. I applied the same effort to recovery as I had done with my addiction. I have not had a drink or taken drugs since. In detox, it made sense that I had been through my addiction so I could eventually help others. I never looked back. Um, I'm what you call a first time winner, meaning that I've never relapsed. I, I did it once. I was serious about recovery and I took the suggestions that were made to me and I, and I never looked back. I experienced happiness very quickly in recovery and I, I didn't look back. So what happened was I had a surgical procedure. I had an angiogram after about a month sober to find out about my heart problem and it turned out to be negative. So I found out that it was actually just a muscle spasm that caused that positive test result. It was enough to kind of tap me on the head to tell me to wake up. And that's what got me into recovery. It was the heart condition that that fear of death was the motivator. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have taken it as seriously. 